When you think of the most popular remote job, you probably are thinking of something like a project manager or a computer engineer. Both of those, by the way, are completely and utterly wrong. And do you want to know what the actual most popular remote job is? Pause the video and make your guess in the comments down below. Again, I am asking for comments because it helps the algorithm. It's call center reps. It's actually 20% of all remote jobs based off the most recent data. And with the release of the new audio API by ChatGPT, this is completely changing the game. AI as of right now accounts for about 20% of all customer interactions. And it's projected by 2025 that it will be closer to 60%. So if you run a call center, should you be freaking out? And I want to break this down because you may or may not be freaking out dependent upon a bunch of different variables. But here's an image that I want to go into that's really going to kind of show you what's going on. So first off, I want to be able to show you this is the cost of GPT 4.0 real time audio API versus call center salaries. And you can see that in the USA, Per minute, it costs about 30 cents to be able to run a call center rep. And in the UK, it's 27 cents. GPT 4.0 is 15 cents. In the Philippines, it's 6 cents. And in India, it's 3 cents. So the reality is that when you look at this, essentially the first version of GPT 4.0's audio real-time API is costing half what it costs to be able to have an American rep run inside of a call center. And that's pretty wild to be able to think about it. I don't know if you've used that model yet. I have, and it is not as good as a call center rep. You can very clearly within about 30 seconds know the difference that it's an AI versus an actual human being. But the reality is that with that API, we can actually install this inside of a multitude of different products. And a lot of SaaS products can actually go to market now that wouldn't have otherwise had this type of capability essentially two years ago. Two years ago, this would have been absolutely and completely impossible to be able to do. And if you could have done it, you probably would have had a multi-billion dollar company on your hands instantaneously. So there's a lot of disruption that's happening here. And here's the kind of brandiose mindset when I think about where this technology is going. Usually things get better and by extension cheaper, i.e. it's the classic Moore's law of computing that computers double their processing capacity every 18 months. But here's what's wild about LLMs and AI in general. It's getting cheaper way faster than it's getting better. Okay, so let me explain that to you. AI has gotten about 95% cheaper in the last year and arguably about 20 to 30% better in terms of compute. So how much it can actually do and what kind of complicated questions you can give it. So if you've used the real-time audio API, it isn't good, but it also isn't bad. And the momentum that I see is gonna be pretty wild when you think about what's gonna happen in the next year, five years, 10 years when you think about the call center industry and where we're going to essentially end up. So let's say in five to 10 years, this thing gets eight to nine X better. Then that means that there's probably a time in which you might not know the difference within on average five minutes or 10 minutes before you actually know it's an AI. So maybe some of these first level questions you can actually figure out relatively quickly before you truly need to get into more complicated questions that you would need a human being to be able to answer. But here's the most important part. Where will the cost of that same AI be in 10 years? It's 15 cents per minute here, and it's probably gonna be a fraction of a penny in 10 years. So where does this fundamentally leave us? Well, it basically leaves us at a point where it is way more profitable in order to be able to have the real-time API answer questions than a rep from India, which is at the bottom of the totem pole when you think about call center outsourcing. So I see five possible outcomes from this entire phenomenon, and I wanna be able to go through it with you right now. So number one, AI call centers will become the norm but you will still want level two support. And that to me is probably something that's currently happening right now. It tried to happen with chat apps, but I mean, I don't know the last time that you tried to use a chat app, but it's been, I mean, it's tough to be able to use those things and they never really worked. Now, obviously there was a huge jump forward with large language models and chat GPT leading the charge with that, but it's still a lot more difficult to be able to work with a chat app than dealing with a human being particularly when it's issues like, hey, you sent me a 
login password for this and it doesn't seem to work and I've tried the 17 things that you need to do in order to be able to make that happen. But if that is the future, I think the long-term implications of that is a 90% reduction in contact center reps. And I don't want that to happen because obviously our company Time Doctor is intrinsically linked to the contact center industry. But again, I'm just giving you the facts here of where I realistically see it. I see a second possibility, which is AI call centers will act almost exactly like our press one for X and two for Y type of systems, Genesis being the leader in that particular space. And that's probably going to create, again, maybe a little bit more of an increase in the amount of people that are currently not working in a call center rep. So the implications for this would be a 10 to 30% reduction in contact center reps, because you'll actually always want to be able to get a real person on the line, much like I do right now, where I just scream agent, agent, agent into the phone until someone actually, or the software connects me to an agent that I can talk to in person. So that might be the next future because we probably have to have a few more exponential jumps in the technology before we truly can have it completely replace a human being, at least in my opinion. The third possibility is the world will need a lot less workers en masse. So it's going to be much easier to replace an accountant or a lawyer than a call center rep because they focus on customer service. So there's usually some emotional connection connected to a call center rep and it's much more profitable to be able to replace a lawyer or an accountant than it is to replace a call center rep. I mean, a call center rep is 30 cents per minute as an example, but a lawyer is probably something like $20 per minute in comparison. So I think that we're probably actually gonna go after the accountants and the lawyers of the world before we actually go after the call center rep. And the implications for this is pretty interesting. So I probably would say with this one, everyone doesn't have a job and we have to switch to like universal basic income or something like that. I don't know where we go from there, but it's probably a point where it doesn't matter whether you're a call center, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're an accountant, you are all losing your jobs at exactly the same rate, in which case we shouldn't necessarily just poke at call centers because I think that fundamentally that's a job that actually is a lot more complicated than a lot of people think it is. The fourth path forward could just be like the invention of the washing machine or the personal computer. So we've seen those types of things happen before. In the late 80s, there was the invention of the personal computer and you saw all of these typing pools that used to exist completely disappear. But the vast majority of that labor was actually retooled. So in my opinion, the implications on this one is we're gonna evolve into a much more creative jobs type of market and you won't see any disruption in the market more than just the retraining required for all of these workers to actually do new things inside of their roles or inside of the companies. So maybe they're not going to be doing call center rep work, but maybe they're going to be working on new and innovative ideas to help people become happier as customers. I don't really even know what it is. And the funny thing too, is that with typing pools, there's a couple great books that I've read on this particular subject of like massive pieces of technology that disrupt environments. That change took approximately 10 years and the variation in employment was approximately 5% of that category. So as people were moving out of that pool, the typing pools, they ended up actually getting access to other jobs and only about 5% of that category of job was left doing nothing which was incredibly successful. And if I had to choose a direction for the future, uh, number four would definitely be at the top of my list. And number five, everyone will actually get replaced at the same time. So from doctors to lawyers to garbage men and contact center reps, AI will be the better than all things equally at the same time solution for everybody. So we're not actually going to have any one particular industry get replaced. All industries will get replaced at the same time, which is very different from like accountants just losing their jobs as an example, or call center reps losing their jobs. All people will lose their jobs at exactly the same time. And the implications for this one is that 90% of all jobs, not just contact center jobs, will go away. And we enter a state of complete and utter apocalypse. And I have no idea what people are going to spend their time doing. Maybe making YouTube videos 
videos all day long or writing poetry, one of those two. But that is probably the scariest one that I see as a possibility because I think fundamentally people need things to do inside of their lives, whether you're a call center rep or anything else. So what do I believe? I either think that we're going to get replaced all at the same time, i.e. the end in the apocalypse, or there's going to be no real difference. So that labor is probably going to really require either retraining or it just fundamentally doesn't get replaced because the technology is not going to be good enough. And this is dependent upon the speed of technology almost entirely. Large language models were such a massive innovation and we will really need real-time agents in order to actually really get the worst possibility for humanity to come forward on this one. And we're not at a point yet where we can actually have multiple agents doing things inside of AIs and they can talk together. Again, I have a video on this that you can check out uh, specifically on how I think AI will evolve based off of what everyone else is saying. But these require individual innovations that are probably as important as the initial building of large language models and GPTs fundamentally. But I also wanna add in a silver lining on this one. This may usher in an age of entrepreneurship that we've never seen before. I personally, myself, just got 10 times more dangerous as an entrepreneur than I was just a few years ago. And that's an incredibly cool concept to be able to think about because the reality is that now individual entrepreneurs don't necessarily need teams of dozens or hundreds of people in order to be able to bring their vision to fruition. And so that's a really exciting time to be alive. I think regardless, we're probably going to be happier people, but it's going to be a very hard transition in between. But on that super apocalyptic note, I will leave you with that. What do you think? Do you think that the call center industry is going down or up or somewhere in between? I'd love to be able to get your comments down below. While you're down there, why don't you actually subscribe to this YouTube channel? It is indeed free and 97% of you do not do it on a regular basis. So please do that as well. And if that's all that we have to say to each other, then I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.